podcast. suffering from dry scalp, hair breakage, thinning of edges, or just overall unhealthy hair? Well, you're in luck. Go from the Big Chop to Lone Flowing Locks with Skull Markers Hair Crack. Hair Crack is an all-natural hair growth stimulant that adds moisture, repairs roots, prevents breakage, and promotes healthy, fast-growing hair. And fellas, it even works on beards. So many people are giving great reviews and testimonials about how Skull Markers Hair Crack has given them their confidence back. From its amazing results, Skull Markers Hair Crack, get marked. Contact us to place your order on Facebook at Skull Marker or email us at schoolmarker at yahoo.com for life-changing results. Peace, everyone, and welcome to the Metaphysics of Love and Relationships podcast. I'm here with my, I'm Jazz the Medium, and I'm here with my host, Juice the Metaphysical, and Mr. Dark Matter. Peace, guys. How y'all doing today? Peace, peace. Before we get started, I would like to give a shout out to WDOE Media. If you have a business and you have any ads that you would like played on this platform, please email WDOEmedia at gmail.com. So since we started a podcast, I figured today we can speak about our reasons for starting this podcast. Um, let's start with Juice. I, I know this is your baby. You've got your book coming out. What's your reason for starting this podcast? Okay. Okay. Let me just say peace to the panel. Um, we in the building. Let me say peace and love to all the spiritual souls out there. Mother Nature, Mother Earth, you feel me? Like. Just want to say peace and love and send out that energy, that great vibration to all. Um, one of my main reasons for being drawn into relationships is because I feel like um, it's not even that I feel like I know I have a passion um, to want to build healthier relationships in society. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is the more healthier your, your relationship is with not just a significant other, but with your friends, um, family, the more healthier it is, the more healthier the world will be, the more healthier our lifestyles will be. Um, a lot of times when you see people in different relationships, they're going through um, some type of toxicity energy. And what happens is that energy gets drawn out to the kids. So the kids become toxic in itself. So one of my main reasons for doing this show is because I have a big heart. Um, I got so much love in me. You feel me? Like I got so much love, my cup flowing over it. Like I, I need to spread this love. You feel? I got too much, so I, I gotta spread it. Like, and when you got too much of something, I feel like you should give it. And one of the ultimate things you could do in the world is give. Like that's the one of the ultimate things you could do, and not just give to expect something in return, but give from the heart, not expecting anything in return because you just want to give. And you just want to, you know, um, present your talents, present your purpose to the world. And, uh, we all have a purpose. And when you fulfill your purpose, um, that helps you grow and elevate. And that helps you express yourself to its fullest capabilities. So um, you can say, I just, I want to see everybody happy. You know, uh, I got a lot of happiness in me. And I just want to express that happiness to the world. So I just want to help build healthier relationships any way I can. Um, and once again, when a relationship is happy, healthy, 
the, the that that energy will be represented with the kids and the kids will be that energy you can reflect down to the village. So you have a happy village, you know, and, and that's how you raise the frequency of the earth is just by um, giving that energy of love. So you could say that's one of my big reasons. Okay. Was it dark matter? Well, I guess the reason for me would be uh, I want people to find true love. I feel like people in a lot of situationships, call them relationships, call them marriages. Uh, I think I'm um, another reason why I want to do this podcast because um, I want to see a lot more black love, true black love, not just forced black love or because of the kids and stuff like that. I just want to see greatness from everybody for real. And I know most of the greatest, most greatest people want is out of a relationship and a lot of people not getting everything they want out of relationships. So I just want to have a, like a, use this like a think tank to figure things out to try to get things better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Queenie? My reason for, I have a few reasons. Uh, my first reason is, of course, I'm a psychic medium and I give readings. And about 98% of my readings are about love and relationships. You know, people want to be in love. People want to fall in love. People want relationships. You know, it's something that I desire along my path as well. So over the years, I've learned a lot of lessons in relationships. I've made a lot of mistakes. You know, I've learned things. I've grown and... I just like to talk about them and I like to help others as well. Um, helping others to me helps myself. Also, I'm, re I'm really big on improving the relationship with yourself. I think that's mm -hmm. most important. And I'm also big on learning. A lot of us, we find it difficult to be honest with ourselves. So I just feel that if you can't be completely honest with you and who you are, how can you be honest in a connection? Right. You know, the best example I can give, like, if you're a free spirit and you know you're a free spirit and you know you desire to have more than one partner, then why enter into a committed monogamous relationship knowing that you don't want to be committed to one partner? So just learning things about yourself and being honest with who you are are, are my complete reasons and lessons that I've had to learn and lessons that I'm still learning. And I noticed that both of y'all both mentioned love. And, and let me elaborate on love because um, for one thing, there's levels to love. You know, you got physical love. You got conditional love. You got unconditional love. You got divine love. So it's different levels to love. But like I tell a lot of people. Um, Explain to me what that divine love is. Could you do that for me real quick? I don't no, think I know no, that. I'm, 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 I'm going to get into it, guy. I'm going to get into it. But let me, let me, let me talk about who we are as a soul, you know, like um, a lot of people look at us as just the body, but it's not, your body is just a physical vessel. You know what I'm saying? It's like a vehicle. The soul is who you truly are. OK, um, you could say the soul is like the driver of that vehicle. In our in our lifetime, we have many cars. You know, we wreck cars. We buy different cars. We upgrade. That's the same thing with our soul. Our soul it, um we, we, we have different lifetimes and different vessels, male, female, black, white, Asian, Chinese, all types of different vessels. You feel me? But that soul, that, that the original essence of who you are is love. And um, look at it like this. When you're first born, right, all we know is love. Um, and a perfect example is if you put toddlers, uh, in, uh, little children in the same room, they're going to express that love with each other. They haven't been taught hate. They haven't been miseducated. They haven't been indoctrinated. You know, so all they know is love. What happens is as we become older, as we become programmed through society, we become miseducated. And we're taught hate based on our parents, based off the media. Uh, it, there's many outlets of where you can get taught hate. So we kind of forget our natural essence of ourselves, which is love. And that's why a lot of people go through their whole life looking for love. And they should have been looking at themselves from the jump. You feel me? And the fact that they done lost that, that connection with themselves, 
They start looking for love outwardly. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. There's no right and wrong. However, I, I feel like a lot of people um, have to get back to our natural essence, which is love, and realize you are love. Your whole energy, your whole aura is nothing but love. But you have to you have to understand that. And I think a lot of people have forgot, you know, because it's, it's different. Like, you know, you get older, you start looking at people differently. Like when you was younger, you, babies ain't care what what race you are, what beliefs you share, your gender, your, your uh, sex orientation. They just want to play. You know, it's all love. Like. And we just got to get back to that natural essence. But can love exist without hate? Um, I feel like the opposite of love is fear. Um, I don't know. I mean, no, no. Because they really like what they like, what, what A and what B. But what is hate? Here's the another, thing. Another, another form of love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another, another opposite of love. You know what I mean? It's 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 degrees of polarity. We we right, right. when we use the word love, we we had to have something to match it against in, in order to even have that term, and that would be hate or fear. So, I think all of us have a little bit of love and hate within ourselves. There's things that we hate. There's things that we dislike. There's things that we fear. Just like there are things that we love. So I don't think that it'll ever exist where we can just be all 100% love. There's going to be a degree of something somewhere in there. You know what I mean? I mean, life is always going to present something that you might not like that might appear ugly to you. You feel me? Um, we can look at everything in life and see hatred or see dislike in it. But the key is, if you ask me, the key is to find the beauty and the ugliness. So whatever you hate, there's something that you still love about what you hate because you, you, you putting out that energy of hate. So th there's something about whatever you hate that you still love, you know what I'm saying, in a deeper scheme of things. But, but, but Randall was talking about divine love. Let me, just, let me, let me give you all my perspective of divine love. The, the divine love is the highest love and the ultimate goal in life, if you ask me. So the divine and unconditional love seeks to understand, to accept, and to forgive. It seeks unity, which is the main source. Just like love is nourishment, love is nourishment for your soul, just like food is nourishment for your body. That's how love is for the soul. Like I was saying, like our natural essence is to love. So without love, your soul is weak. Just like without food and water, your body is weak. You know, as within, so without, like law of correspondence. So there is no need to possess or control another. And although challenges are common and also connections and relationships, each challenge gives us that precious opportunity to grow into our true selves and guides the way for the soul through this journey we call life. So divine love is the ultimate highest form of love. Like you, you know, it's um, people talk about extraterrestrials, right? Um, mm -hmm. There are beings that are way above our consciousness way above how we are as human beings, and they have nothing but love. That's why a lot of extraterrestrials don't intervene with human life, because they understand the whole essence of love, divine love. Like, once again, like I said, there's levels to this. You got unconditional love, you got conditional love, which is all necessary. But when you got conditional love, it's just a lower form, you know? But our, our, our divine love is the highest love, God. And that's why I said divine love seeks to understand and set. It don't separate. It don't, it don't distinct. It don't, it don't, you don't place judgment. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you get into that divine love, that, that, that love, you can express that to the world. That's what we need. Cause it's too much conditional love on this earth. And, and that's why there's a lot of self hate. There's no self love. Mr. Dark matter. What's your, um, What's what's your opinion on divine love? Unconditional love. <laughs> uh, Don't they call it agape? Is that the other name for it? Agape. <laughs> My apologies. I think, for about love is, I think that could be something that could be taught. 
think that I've been taught unconditional love. Oh, You've been taught unconditional love? Yeah. I think, I think I've been taught unconditional love. that most humans haven't even achieved what unconditional or divine love is. That's that's facts. Factory. Most humans haven't. I think to have the ability to love and to completely understand um, even those that hurt us or those that, who have done us wrong or other things like that or loving things that we fear is um, a very high level of mastery that a lot of humans most humans have not hit yet. And I'll be a liar if I sit here and tell you that I've mastered the art of unconditional love because I haven't yet. I'm working on it, but I haven't yet. You know, my idea of unconditional love is like the earth or nature. Because no matter what we do to fuck it up, no matter what we do to it, it still does its job. We could cut down all these trees, mess up all these trees, they still take in carbon dioxide and give us oxygen to breathe with. You know, we still have water for supplies. The earth still supplies us with food. The earth still supplies us with life. No matter how damaging we are, still it, it still it still has its function. And we all know that nature is very much alive. To me, that's unconditional love. And that's difficult for humans who feel emotions, who have hate and fear and stuff like that to get to. That's, I, is, it I all part of, is it all part of the divine plan? <sighs> I think that everything that happens to us is a part of a divine plan. Facts. Everything. I agree. I agree. There's something outside of us. Everything. Everything. I don't care if you had the most messed up life in the universe. I don't care if a torna tornado came and took your whole entire family and all your cattle, it, it's all a part of a divine plan. I, I don't care if you take them of violence or anything. I believe that everything that happens to us, good or bad, and this is a this is very hard for a lot of people to accept. I think it's all a part of a divine plan. I'm just going to say, no. what you say? I said especially the slavery part. The slavery part. Uh, that was needed too. Slavery was needed too. That was, that, that's, hard. That's, that's, one, that's one that's hard to swallow. That it might have been happening for a reason. I mean, when you when you look at say, slavery on a human level, on a on a physical third dimensional level, of course you go feel some type of way. Um, and that's understandable. Once again, like I'm not knocking anybody who who feel like that because on a human level, it's not right to want to enslave and torture and commit harm to anybody. I mean, that's once again, that's not love. But on a, on a um on a higher dimensional scale, uh, when you look at it from your God self, once again, when you we are soul, we are energetic beings. So everything that we experience is a part of our total consciousness. Um we sometimes we have to go through things, you feel me, to get the total experience. Even though the experience might not be heavenly, um it still is is important. It's still pivotal to your self growth and self evolution, um, and, and a lot of people don't realize that. So, um, let me just make this point. Let me make this point because because a lot of people look at relationships in a way where they they're looking for love, and there's nothing wrong with that. But like I tell a lot of people, like. Relationships are not based on how much we love our partners, but it's based on how much we love ourselves. So your relationship is really only a mirror 
So whatever, whoever you in a relationship with, your significant other, your companion, the one you choose to share a portion of your life with, it is centered on what your soul is attracted to. Um, if your soul is, is full of drama, it's full of hate, you're going to attract people, places, and things to accommodate how you feel internally. That's the law of um, polarity. That's the law of uh, law, uh, correspondence. I'm sorry. As within, so without. So if you possess a lot of hate within yourself, you're going to attract people, places, and things, a.k.a. your jobs, a.k.a. scenarios, your environment, your atmosphere, that you're going to hate. And these people and these things is going to remind you of how much you hate it because everything is a mirror. Like, so a lot of people are looking for love and they don't realize like you got to find that internally. And once you know that you are love, you don't have to go looking for it. You know that you are love within yourself. You're going to start attracting people to remind you how much they love yourself. So in a sense, of, on a deeper scale, like we don't really fall in love. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're already in love. How you going to fall in something that you already are? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to fall into it. Just be it. And a lot of, like, we, a lot of people don't know that, you know? And that's the key thing. Like, once you know you are love, you're going to attract jobs that you love. You're going to want to wake up and go to, to your job. You ain't going to be stressed out. You ain't going to be, like, trying to call off, you know, because you're going to love your job. You're going to love your house. You just go love life because everything is a mirror. You're just reflecting how you feel within outwardly. And, and once you do that, then, you know, you go see like how, how, how pivotal, and how important life can be. That's why I say relationships is not based on how much you love your partner. It's based on how much you love yourself. Cause if you don't love yourself, you will always commit drama and hate to whoever come in your, in your aura, into your energetic field. So you could be in a thousand relationships, but if you hate yourself, you're going to hate all them thousand people that you try to relate to, you know, because it's just a, it's like a reflection. I wanted to say two things real quick. The first thing is um, going back to the, the slavery and love thing. I wanted to say that love does not take away the need to protect or defend ourselves. So being loved does not mean that you can't you shouldn't go to war over protecting yourself or protecting your family or doing what, doing whatever you need to do. Basically, if somebody sting you or hit you, you know, if you need to protect yourself, then you need to hit them back. So right. sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people, they, they think that love means, you know, you don't do anything. It's all peace. And it's not always the case. We do have the right to protect ourselves. I just have to put that out there because some people, they take it too literally. Um, secondly, and I lost my train of thought that fast. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. I was there. I was there. I was there. I was there. Okay, secondly, what you were saying about being a mirror, I was thinking about something. Um, recently, I remember I had been complaining about my job. I was like, man, I hate my job. I hate my job. And I was complaining every day. And then every day when I would go to work, I wouldn't have a good day. So one day I kind of sat down and realized is that I was presetting myself to have a bad day at my job because I was verbalizing that I hate my job. And I realized that my performance at work and my performance in other areas of my life that I complained about were actually reflections of myself or how I felt about myself. You know, I didn't feel confident about my job. That's why I hated my job. It had nothing to do with the job or I didn't feel confident about whatever else I was complaining about. So instead of me, I had to learn that instead of me looking outside of myself and getting angry at all of these things outside of myself that aren't going the right way, I had to go internally and figure out why I'm the common denominator about why all this stuff is not right to me. Facts. I think that's very important to remember that when things around you aren't going right in your life, like you're arguing with different people, you're fighting with everybody, you're not getting doing well at your job, your business ain't going right, your relationship ain't going right, y'all fighting every day, what's going on? It's important to look at the self, look at the self and say, how do I play a part in this? Even if you with somebody toxic and they're bringing all these arguments and stuff there and you staying, why am I still here? What 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 aspect of this relationship am I mirroring? Does that make sense? Oh, that makes all the sense. Any thoughts on that, Mr. Dark Matter? Uh, I'm trying to figure it out because I'm trying to see and look at myself <laughs> and I don't I really can't find what I really can't find it. And I'm asking people and they can't say that. So it's like I, 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 that's that's a call for me. I really I really try to look for it. 
So let me, let me ask you something, like right? That's a hard one for me. Do y'all feel like um, when we want to manifest things in our life, right? A lot of people want to manifest things they want. But do you feel like we manifest things that we want? Or do you feel like we manifest things of who we are? If if if, if I'm making that clear, I don't want to. Is that clear to y'all or what? Should I reword that? Because that did kind of suck. It's very clear to me. Okay. okay. I feel like we manifest things, but we don't put ourselves in a position to receive it. Right, That's right. Why this time not to enter in a relationship and to be isolated. Because I said, if I want to manifest the right relationship that's for me, then I need to be free and present and I need to work on myself to put myself in a position to receive the right, like, that's like, that's like you doing, let's say, let's say you doing magic and you doing magic, money work, money work, money work, money work, money, but you ain't working, you ain't got no business, you just sitting here waiting for money to come in. So what channel is the universe going to bless you through if you're not doing anything but sitting there and waiting? Mm -hmm. So to manifest something, you have to be in a position to energetically receive what you're manifesting. I agree. Yeah, you got to use now, You got to use the energy. What would you say? Say that you again, God. You got to use energy. <laughs> you got to move body. You got to actually use your energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's facts. We are energetic beings, and a lot of people don't know, like, we attract um, certain things. And not only attract, we create our own life scenarios based on how we think and feel. And and that's the, 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 the two most important things people got to realize. So a lot of times when people tell themselves, oh, I'm broke, I'm broke, you're going to attract, you're going to be broke. You're going to continue to live check to check. So... You know that term fake it till you make it. Sometimes you gotta apply that to life. So even if you broke, you gotta tell yourself I'm rich. You feel me? Don't tell yourself you broke. Tell yourself, even if you feel like you're not, even if you know you're not rich, think you rich. Not only think, feel it. So sometimes it's key like to meditate. And when you meditate, envision yourself in a situation where you have a lot of money. That's why using your imagination is one of the most one of the most godliest things you could do, because when you break down the word imagination, we, we go into the image nation, like paint images in your head that you want to see fit in your reality. So even if you don't have certain things, even if you don't have a loving partner or you're single or you want to be married, use your imagination and, and, and create scenes in your head and your mind where you are married. You're walking down the aisle. You know, and not only think it, but feel it, actually feel it when you're envisioning this, you know, and that's the key to uh, visualization. A lot of people don't realize like visualization is very important. It's just as important as imagination, you know, and um, that's just that's just a higher level of attracting what you want to see fit in your reality. And um, once people start using them techniques, they go see that their reality shift to a better level to a higher level you know um personally i've been doing it my whole life uh, i'd have been in past relationships where and randall could contest to this because he um i was with a uh, woman for 14 years my uh, my kid's mother my first kid's mother i swear for 14 years and um she used to talk to my lower self you know um she used to tell me i was never going to be ish um uh, no but i was gonna never find a woman like her and you know, she wasn't speaking to to the higher my, my crown chakra. She she was speaking to my root chakra, and um, I don't fault her for that. Uh, I still got nothing but love for her. I wish her the best. But she taught me something. She taught me that I could have listened to her words right and allow that to affect me to the point I could have put my hands on her. I could have tried to harm her because of what she was saying to me. But deep down, everything that she was expressing to me, I knew it wasn't true. So I didn't allow her words to to dictate how I feel, how I, how I truly felt within myself. So, um, but she taught me something, and that's the whole purpose of relationships. And that's why I, um, that's why I want to start this podcast with y'all because relationships really let us know who we are on a wholesome level. 
it like certain relationships help you unlock aspects of your aspects of yourself you never knew existed. You know what I'm saying? So when you go through a relationship with a certain person, they will help you unlock something in yourself. You'd be like, I didn't even know that existed. Now you're conscious of it. And that's how you become whole. You know, you be you be you 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 start to know yourself more. So you don't engage in multiple relationships trying to find your identity. And that's why a lot of people sabotage their, their current relationships because they're looking for they're looking for themselves through other people and they're having an identity crisis. So they go through all these relationships trying to figure out who they are. And they don't realize, like, you got to look in the mirror first. And I ain't necessarily talking about a, a, a mirror, glass mirror. Like, you got to you gotta close your eyes and just look within yourself. You know, that's the mirror right there. And just know how you think and feel. Question for you, though, Juice. Um, you said that she spoke to your lower self for 14 years. Do you think you played any part in that? <laughs> hey, listen, listen, listen I, I, I wasn't perfect, man. Listen, I wasn't perfect. Yeah, I cheated. I cheated. But let me, let me, let me like, a lot of people look at infidelity in, in a negative light. Uh, personally, sometimes when people cheat, it make the love stronger, especially when y'all can get over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, uh, it make the bond, the connection stronger. You know, you got that 5G Wi-Fi. You know what I'm saying? So you not you don't got that dial-up tone anymore type of connection. You know what I'm saying? So there's nothing wrong with infidelity. No, but no, but yes, I, I did. I did. Ass, right? <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Give it that ass, right? So what's the thing? <laughs> Why be in a committed relationship if you're not going to be faithful? Why don't you just be single and be free? But once again, when I when I was with my my first kid's mother, we was together for 14 years. Um, when we hooked up, we both were young, so we both was going through an identity crisis in a sense because we both didn't know who we were. Um, not only did I cheat, she cheated too. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't perfect, but it's. We we you know it's not about keeping score and tallying up who did what the most. You feel me? So I feel like we both were young, and and that's why I tell a lot of young people don't be quick to jump in a relationship. Go 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 experience life. Like go live life up. Like I go agree. to the club. Go yeah, go to the club. Yeah. Go go yeah. deal with multiple partners. You feel me? Like like I feel like that's needed. Because cause when you deal with multiple partners, people help you unlock, like, once again, people help you unlock things you didn't know about yourself. So, like, like Jazz, you could contest to this, right? You done had sex with some guys, and they didn't unlock that orgasm in you. But you had sex with another guy, he made you feel way better. Like, wow. So, your, your experience is what helped you figure out yourself more. You knew that 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 existed in you. You knew that, or now you'd be like, I know how I'm supposed to feel sexually, and and once again we could talk about uh, we could talk about mentally because some guys unlock things in your mind that you never thought about, but now you are evolved person, and, and Randall can contest this because we don't unlock a lot of people's minds in our life. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> they might not want to give us props for that, which we ain't looking for props, but we don't unlock a lot of people's minds, and we help them tap into that consciousness where. They didn't even know certain things existed. And by them talking to us and uh, and, and we presenting that knowledge to them, we help them unlock things. So um, I still love my kid's mother. You know what I'm saying? Not like on a level like that, but I got love for her because I got love for myself. And I wish her the best, but I wasn't perfect. She wasn't perfect. We was young. Um, 14 years is a long time, so we tried. We tried. I mean, we talk about 14 years. That's a long time. Um, but once again, you can't force a connection. And that's what happens. Like the universe eventually repels anything that's not on your frequency. We weren't on the same frequency. So we had no choice but to split apart because it's universal law. Like, like two energies gotta be on the same wavelength. If you're not on that same wavelength, you go eventually um repel from each other, you go eventually attract to something else. And that's what happened. I end up being attracted to other energies. So, and I knew that 
she uh, with us being on opposite frequencies, it won't go work. You can't force a connection. It should be natural. I agree. I'm from, the, I'm from, I'm from the natural state. I'm from the natural state. <laughs> I want to your relationship and you my spiritual you journey. You yeah, my spiritual journey is kind of what took us. We ended up kind of growing apart from each other because of our spiritual differences and our spiritual beliefs. And I kind of, we just kind of grew into two different people. You know, I met him when I was very young. We just grew into two different people. So that did... You know, you do grow apart, you end up on two different frequencies, two different wavelengths, and mm -hmm. you know, it ended. But so it I taught you a lot, though. It taught you a lot, right? Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that relationship I, I learned from, especially with being in a 14 year relationship with an Aries, and we all know Aries, they don't, they, they shoot first. <laughs> They shoot fire first. sign, fire sign, and I'm fire too, by the way. But they teach uh, you a lot. Um, what I learned is I learned a lot about myself. But the crazy thing is, you know, I learned the most about myself when I was in periods of hurt. When somebody done cheated on you, they hurt you, they broke your heart, and you sitting by yourself, and you you mulling over everything that happened, why it happened, or when it, when it happened, or why did this happen to me, or what's going on with us right now, why we're arguing a lot, why we have problems, because every relationship has problems. It doesn't necessarily have to be cheating. Those are times when I was forced to kind of really sit down and look at myself and say, okay, what could I have done to better help this, or what could I have changed to better make it, you know, to make it go better, or what did I do that wasn't in alignment with our frequency? So... Sometimes that hurt is needed or that pain is needed. And let me let me go back to the cheating. Let me go back to the cheating and infidelity because um once again a lot of people experience that. Uh, I think a lot of people put a negative connotation on cheating. You feel me? Which I mean, once again, I don't judge. I never went to law school. I don't judge. So I you could people go view it how they want, but you gotta realize there are people who met the love of their life. And the only reason they met the love of their, of their life is because their ex cheated. So when you go back and look at what your ex did to you, do you really look at it as a bad thing? Because the fact that they cheated on you is what allowed you to separate from that ex to meet to love the love of your life. You know what I'm saying? So now you're happy. Like that person that you with compliments your happiness. That's, that's why a lot of people look at, oh, he cheated, she cheated. Like sometimes that's needed. You know what I mean, I'm saying? I, I can kind of see the I can see the duality in that and in, in what you're saying, but the point that I'm making is that how much hurt and pain are you causing? Because whenever you do the, the issue with cheating with me is the is deceit. It's not the fact that you're with one more than one energy, it's the fact that you're lying about what you're doing. So basically you're satisfying your by you satisfying yourself or your or what you feel are your needs. You're hurting somebody else. So you're putting this person in a whole nother healing cycle that they have to go through to learn to trust and love again to satisfy yourself. That's my issue with cheating and deception. You know, be honest. If, if, if you're a free spirit and you like to get pussy, go get pussy. Just be honest. Like, hey, I like you. You like me. But look, I, I'm going to have a few other ones out here. My thing is just be honest. Why, Why lie about it? Why you lying? What? That's all I'm... Mr. Dark Matter with... with yeah, I hear you over there talking, man. Speak up. No, I, I was saying, um, <laughs> why well, I just got to be going to get some pussy? <laughs> <laughs> just be honest about it. Whether you want to, you know, be fruit snacks and have a conversation, I mean, put, watch, put that, whatever you want to be honest same, about put, it. Put, put that same energy in a female version. Look, I'm not talking about male. Or I'm talking about infidelity, lying, and cheating. Period. Females cheat too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but you didn't. You didn't. You didn't give a description of how they cheat. Yeah, we want that. Mister Dark, <laughs> I spoke generally. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke generally. Look. <laughs> I ain't talking about I'm not I'm not one of those women that think all oh, men this all men this all men that females we 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 you know <laughs> we y'all cheat smarter. Yeah. 
We don't get caught. That's all. And, and, and we all cheat. Y'all, y'all cheat to find love too. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey do she, do she just to get off? We don't, listen, listen. Most men don't cheat with the intentions of leaving a woman or a wife. A woman will cheat on you with the possibility of looking for another person to replace you. That's a fact. Mm. No, not always. What what, not what always. Not hear. always. Sometimes I'm telling you, women. Sometimes we don't care either. Sometimes we just we just have. I'm satisfied in other places. It's not always. We're looking for an emotional connection. And just because you're looking for an emotional connection don't mean that you want to walk away from your, your spouse uh, or whoever you with. Hey, Jazz, I, I hear you, but I'm a, I'm a male. I'm masculine energy. I've been involved with a lot of women. I didn't even personally knew they had guys because personally, I don't ever ask a woman, do you got a boyfriend? I don't ever bring a, I don't ever bring a guy up. So when I engage with women, I let them be themselves and and later on, I found out they got a boyfriend, but they, if, if I would have acted right, they was willing to leave their boyfriend for me. If I act the way they want, if I acted the way they wanted me to, you know what I'm saying? The point I'm trying to make is, because I'm a guy, right? And I don't, I don't cheat it. But like, when I cheated, I knew, let's say, I, I, I might have cheated on a woman. I knew she was better than my, my, my current girlfriend. I knew that woman was better in all areas, but I never thought about leaving my my current girlfriend for that woman. I never thought about it. I just never, never did. Never. That's true. Never. Mr. Never. Never. Uh, huh? Never. Never. That's that's true. Like okay. nine times out of ten, like, and I'm a tourist, so it's it's a little bit, of, it's a lot more for me because like, I I got a loyal issue. <laughs> so <laughs> I can know I can know a girl better than my girl, and and I and I and. I, and and it's just like it's hard for me to let. It's just, I'm not cheating to to be like, "You my new bitch." No, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I, like, so why don't I like you just you be and, honest? So why don't you just uh, be honest? Why, why why can't we be honest hold here? Up, hold on, time out, time out. What, what? How do you know I ain't being honest? I don't. I don't. We're talking about cheating and infidelity. I don't. Too, I don't if you're if I don't, honest with your partner that you're sleeping with other oh, people, then it's not cheating. Oh well, if we're talking old or current, because currently I don't, I'll be I've been been honest with the past ten years. I'll be honest like a motherfucker. We're not talking well, personally though. We're talking generally oh. though, what makes cheating oh, cheating like, infidelity infidelity is the the lying part of it, the sneaky. Generally, part of it. generally the lying comes because we want to leave her. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to be honest. You know, give that person, give that person the opportunity to make a choice on whether they want to stay and deal with you doing what you want to do or leave. He like why lie about it? He don't. He's lying because he don't. He, he knows that he's not going to have the opportunity to have her anymore, and he, he, that's why. <laughs> you never know what her response is going to be. So that is cheating. You said, you said what? So, but you never know what her response is going to be. So you'd rather lie and hurt her. Right. I tell I've been I done told guys. Don't that sound a little selfish like, you stuff? Don't know what you get away. He breaking up. Can you hear him? Hmm. What what now? Yeah, hey, you breaking up. You breaking up. All we heard is what I'm saying. Yeah, you gotta you gotta repeat that. I knew something smart okay. came after that, but go ahead. Go. Damn, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> let me say this. Let me say this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, K. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me say this, Jazz. A lot of people lie to themselves. They lie about who they are. So, of course... They gonna lie to the woman or the man. You you can't be keeping real with yourself. So how you gonna expect to keep it real with someone else? <laughs> you feel me? Like like and and, and and let me let me just say this from my past experiences. Um, I don't. I'm not saying like cheating and infidelity is the right thing to do. I'm not saying that. However, um, women talk about all the time. Yeah, he hurt me, but it's a reason why that man. Went to go cheat with another woman in the first place, just like it's a reason why that woman. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being 100. Like, <laughs> and, and, and it goes both ways. It goes both ways, too. I know it do, but why not just be yeah. honest? I, I cheated before, too. But why not I just mean, be honest? Hey, hey, you, y'all can't handle the truth. Nah, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Nah, ain't nobody, ain't nobody can handle the truth. It's, it's, you gotta be a, you, it's a, you gotta be a rare breed to handle the truth, man. Everybody can handle the truth. That's real. Cause people treat love like possession. They don't treat love like appreciation. So when you in a relationship, most people feel like they, they some, go some ahead, feel like they ain't they ain't loved unless they are they are unless they are possessing you. It's not, that's what they think love <laughs> is possession. Oh, oh, and that's why they that's oh, why they never had somebody else my dick. I, I, that's my <laughs> shit. I possess that. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a form of slavery. I mean, I do think that possession can be looked at as low vibratory, but so is cheating. So is lying. I listen, I agree. And I feel like people should be honest. But you gotta be honest vibratory. with yourself. Procreate is low vibratory. Oh, I just said pro procreate is low vibratory. No, procreating is not low vibratory. I'm talking about honesty. Come on. Oh. Mr. Dark oh. Matter, what plan? You but know what Jazz, Jazz, coming from a man, and, and, and Mr. Dark Matter can agree with me, most men who do cheat, we're not cheating with the intentions of leaving our significant other. Honestly, we're trying to forget what she put us through. Like, some women put you through hell. So you go through another woman just to feel a sense of heaven. But you still go back to that woman, your significant other. My thing is be honest. Be honest. And and then again, that goes back to self-love. Why you keep putting yourself through hell if you love yourself? But you you once again, we 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 know we're naturally loving beings. However, we live in a society that teaches you self-hate. So you start building insecurities about yourself and which causes you to be dishonest. And I agree, Jazz. I definitely agree. If you Living a double, triple, quadruple life, you should be all the way honest. I agree. I, I, I'm 100% agree with you. However, um, some people lie to themselves all the time, and some men feel like a woman can't handle the truth, and some women feel like a man can't handle the truth. Because sometimes when you be honest with somebody, they'll try to kill you, or, or they'll try to hurt you or harm you, so you're kind of scared to tell the truth because my life might be in, in, in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> That's just facts. Like, you know, some people can't handle the truth. I guess the point that I'm making is that we tend to stay in situations <laughs> where we, sh we should no longer be. So instead of us, you know, being honest with ourselves that we're in situations where we don't want to be, we step out and we lie to these people. When I just believe that we owe the person that we're with Honesty. Let them make the decision on whether they want to deal with your mess or not. Well, we could sit here and, and, and I'm pretty sure like man or woman, whoever steps out on their significant other for another person for whatever reason, we could write down a whole sheet of paper of reasons why they might have um, stepped out with somebody else. And that's why after I do my after I create this book on um, uh, metaphysics of love relations, I got another book coming out. And I already told y'all, I already talked to King and Queen. Like I got a book on. It's like 17 ways where. It's going to be hard for someone to want to cheat on you, you know what I'm saying? Basically, there's there's 17 things you could do where if you if you do these things. You're making it less likely for someone else to exist in your significant other's life. All right. And we that's a whole other show. Y'all already know. We didn't talk about that. But a lot of times, like when. Everybody don't. Huh? Everybody don't what? He's breaking up. I said everybody don't care who they should never get other way as long as they be honest. I mean, I honesty is one of them. 
happens. And then it, it puts it puts you at risk when people are out there. There's too much out there. You know, you bring home STDs, more children, you know, things like that. I just think that I just think that we need to get into the habit of being more honest. Hey, hey people worry about STDs. I'm more worried about trans spiritually transmitted disease. You feel me? There's <laughs> like, a lot of that going on, boy. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the real STD, spiritually, that's spiritually real, transmitted real. disease. Okay, and hey, don't don't be giving me those spiritually. Like man, I, I'm over here trying to evolve. Don't be don't don't cause me to be stagnant with your messed up energy. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's key to as a man and woman not to be sexually involved with just anybody because um once again people always yeah. talk about. STDs. Go ahead. Go ahead, King. Go ahead. I'm, I'm proud of you, sir. That's why you got to evolve. Lord, keep going. You got to evolve. <laughs> I, I'll say a lot of people worry about a lot of people worry about physical, sexual transmitted disease, but man, like a lot of times things be spiritual, and um, as a result, we manifest things physically based because our spiritual realm is um. You're disconnected from your your spiritual essence. Don't so worry about both. I don't want neither one of them. What you say? You say that again. I don't want neither one of them. You give them both. Shoot, both of them. Hey, I, I guarantee a lot of people get more spiritually transmitted diseases than sexually transmitted diseases. I'm just being one hundred. Yeah, people of watch, course. Like, watch, TV, watch TV and movies, all type of shit. Yeah, like. I, I done been involved with a lot of girls. I, a lot of girls ain't burnt me, but a lot of them was not good for my soul. They was not nutrition for my soul. You feel me? Like, so, oh, like... Being older, <laughs> being older, what lessons have you taken with you as far as cheating is concerned? Like, that now that you're older, now that you've made your mistakes in the past, would you be more in line to cheat? Or... You know, what type of situations are you looking for? Are you more looking for, a, would you rather be in a plural situation or, you know, where, where is your, where's your spirit at now? Where's your heart at now? Go ahead, Mr. Dark Matter. I'll let you go first. All right, man. Damn. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. man, some real shit, man. All my life, I've been telling all my friends I want to live like the real world because I don't believe in no relationship. (laughs) 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 But uh, I tried it. I've been trying it out, and I've been failing, it seems like. It seems like... uh... Say the question one more time because I got got to make sure I'm answering this correctly. Now that you know, now that you 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 you've done what you've done in the past, and like from here on forward, what's your idea on relationships and cheating? Like, what's your standpoint from it? Do you still feel like cheating, or do would you rather have be with one person to be loyal, or would you rather have multiples? I'd probably rather have multiples. Why? But I want to be with one person. But it it just seems like I won't be satisfied with one person. And there's nothing wrong with that. Can you be honest about not being satisfied with one person? Uh, yes. I I think I told my baby mother that before a couple, a couple more than once. And, hey. and I've said this, and I've said it, I've said this because it's certain things that she can't give me that I be needing from a woman. And I told her this because I really don't want to cheat on her. That's why I'm telling her. So maybe she can figure it out to, to try to, 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 to give it to me. This is one of the point of why I communicated with her. So it's like I'm trying not to cheat because I want you to be able to give it to me. And then once I see you can't give it to me and, and I know I still want to be with you, it's like, all right, I'm going to try to still be with you, but I'm, it's, that, it's a nagging call for me to try to to get receive this energy that I'm trying to receive from a woman that I want from this person. It's like it's like it's kind of manifesting subconsciously. Okay. So you know it's, it's like so that's why I'm like shit. 
I don't want to keep jumping in a single relationship with one person and they keep making me feel a certain uh, uneasy or uncomfortable to where I can be vulnerable to go to. But how does that mirror you? How does it remember mirror me? Yeah. Um, if you're manifesting someone who can't give you everything you feel like you need, how does that mirror? I don't. I don't think it mirrors me. I mean, but what, how? What do you think? I believe every relationship we has mirrors. It mirrors us in some way, shape, or form. I, I I've changed. And that's friendships too. I can't find it. Let me let me let me speak let me speak for the king real quick. What he basically trying to say is like he don't mind being with one woman, but she got to possess what multiple women possess. So a man who's with multiple women, that one woman gonna have to have all that in one. You know what I'm saying? Am I right? right. So basically, you're looking for perfection. No, it's not. It's not necessarily I'm perfection. I'm not saying perfection. I'm I'm just saying what I need in a woman. It's not the same what Juice needs. So it's not really perfection. You know, it makes me think of that that lyric in that Erica Badu song, Next Lifetime, when she says, you know that I'm a lot of woman, but not enough to divide the pie. I mean, how many people do y'all expect us to be? How many? No, well, first of it's all, not, it's, not, it's not a person. That, hold on, hold on. Let me say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me answer this. That's not a person I'm expecting you to be. It's it's mentalities that I'm expecting you to have. It's it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a emotional intelligence I'm expecting you to have. It's it's you're forcing uh, somebody to have something that they don't have. Huh? You're forcing you somebody what? to have something that they don't have. Well, well, I don't think it's forcing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If people are forcing me to. And, and at the same time, and at the same time, people people are forcing me to be in relationships, forcing me to to be married, knowing that they, they don't have what it takes. Then you don't want to do. Well, my, what I'm saying is that you're staying in a in a relationship with somebody with the mindset that's not compatible to yours, or an emotional intelligence that's not in alignment with what you need. Yeah, yeah, and I've had that person and. <laughs> so it's like, and that's hey, you breaking is. up bad. You breaking up bad, okay? <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Okay, it's, it's, it's real world. It's, it's, but I know it's real world. Smart. It's real world. At at this point, it's real world or nothing. I mean, I'm trying to get that compound. You know what I'm saying, King? The question, Juice, to <laughs> Mr. Dark Matter. Hey you, hey, you got one boy over there. You got bad reception, bro. You over there on, I don't know, Cincinnati Bell Wireless, your your phone provider. I don't know, bro. You, <laughs> <laughs> hey, your reception over there, man. What you got? Metro CPS? I mean, uh, G, what, what's that called? Metro P? I don't know, bro. Yes. What you got? Uh, cricket? Get <laughs> off. <laughs> the question. Oh, man. I, I, but let me, let me, let me, let me say this. Let me just say this. Let me say this. Like, I know where he's going. Um, it's not like it's forcing. You're not trying to force your mate I to possess. expectations. I just feel like too much are expected of women sometimes. Too much. But go ahead. No, because really, men don't really care for a woman. Nah. Like, no, no, jazz, jazz. Women want. They expect a lot more from a man than a man from a woman. That's just facts. That's just, like, come on. That's 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 facts. Yeah, ask, ask, uh, ask, uh, what's the dude name? Ask him. They, they want a six figure nigga. Kevin Samuels. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, they want, they, they want a really six figure right. man. Y'all expect us. I feel like sometimes y'all expect us to have 20 arms, work full time, full time parents, keep the house clean, cook every day, book y'all when y'all want it. Uh, 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 you know, tend to your emotional needs, tend to all this stuff. And then and then if you, you drop the bomb in one area, then it's not good enough. So you gotta go see another bitch. 
No, that's not what we're saying. That's a lot. That's not what we're saying. Is, I disagree. Like, telling, no, no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, what, if I keep telling you the problem over and over, you're not doing nothing about it, then I'm going to go fuck another bitch. That's what I'm telling you. Then why are you staying? Why are you still there? If this person is not tending to you emotionally and spiritually, why the fuck are you still there? I think, I think for the most part, people tend to you a certain way when you first meet them. Um, however, they fall off because it's easy for people not to keep up that same energy that they had when they first met you. Um, and that's the problem with modern day relationships. People don't keep up and do the same things that 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 draw on that person in the first place. You feel me? Like like going out on dates, uh, open up the doors. Maybe it was flowers, cards, things like that. Poetry, um, being very romantic. It's like like nowadays, like when somebody got you, they get too comfortable. And and a lot of times when you get too comfortable, you just feel like, oh, this person ain't going anywhere. So I ain't got to do what I used to do. You know, a lot of men and a lot of men can agree to this. When they first meet a woman, they probably was having sex every day, every other day, you know. And now that they've been together for X, X amount of years or months, like that woman quit expressing that sexual energy to that man. I mean, that's what I heard a lot. You know, so that's just an example of why a, a man probably went out and looked for something else. But a lot of people don't keep up that same energy that they was trying to um that they had when they first got you in the first place, you know, and you see it a lot. And it's not just with men, but it's with women too. That brings me back to honesty and respect. If you love this woman, and let's say her sex drive isn't as strong, or this is going on and that's going on, be honest about it. No, her sex drive might have been strong. She just quit giving it up like that. Maybe because her drive isn't as strong. But it was strong when you first met her. It, it was strong when you first met her. I'm telling you, over years, our, our drive, they do decline. I really, feel like that, I really feel like that man was satisfied the way she needed to be satisfied. That's why I declined. That personally so, could. Sometimes as women with our bodies and our hormones, sometimes our drive just declines. It comes with age. Especially if you with somebody for 15 to 20 years and stuff like that, that comes with age. Well, you need to you you need to find like as a, okay okay I agree I agree Jazz and as a as a a high enlightened man you need to find ways to you need to find ways to keep her sex drive high so that means maybe take her on vacations create different scenarios don't always have sex in the same environment. Um, man, did you just hear? Did you just hear what this woman just said? Sometimes they hormones. Have them out of whack. It don't matter where you take them. The hormones about to say they're gonna be like this. And, 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 no, I, I heard what she said, but I ain't experienced that yet. So it's kind of it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to know because I haven't experienced that yet. I haven't experienced no woman whose sex drive just went all the way down. I haven't experienced that yet. So I'm not saying she's not telling the truth. I just haven't experienced that. Your experiences will shape your truth. Like whatever you go through in life, yeah, that's, that's what you might feel like it's true. That's for you. Yo, yeah, I know. I'm just saying I've experienced that shit. I have experienced that. Yeah, I'm not you. saying it doesn't exist. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying I haven't experienced it yet. But I agree with her. I agree. I, I, that it's a lot faster what she said. But my thing is, if you if you love, let, let's say somebody. Prime example, I have I have an autoimmune disease. I have lupus, whatever. It's been a remission for years. But when when I was sick, I was extremely fatigued. So I would sleep up to maybe 20 hours a day. So I might not have the energy to do so. Yeah, but you you lupus. If you love me and you honor me, why not be honest than to sneak out or lie to me about it? I mean, sneaking in line. Question, man. The man don't want. He don't want to end up. He don't want to. to, to, to he don't want you to have make a decision, or he don't want you to have a decision to leave his ass. That's why. <laughs> Thank you for your yeah, honesty. <laughs> and, 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 and listen, he don't want you to have a decision <laughs> to make that. Please understand you know, that he don't want. You, he don't want. He don't want you to have a. He don't even want you to have a thought to leave this man. 
That's or, why he lying. Or, or he don't want to see another man up in his woman. That's so, the same shit I just said. Yeah, same the same shit. Shit. I feel like you have to be honest. Like if you really, once again, this goes to unconditional love, right? Unconditional love. If you really possess unconditional love, divine love, you're going to be honest. And you're going to allow that man or woman a choice. Maybe they, could, maybe they can't handle your infidelity and want to leave. And you should allow them to leave if that's the case. But I agree. You should be honest. You should be truthful. You should be upfront. You should lie. And you should allow oh, that yeah. person a free will to the suckers because sometimes sometimes you can keep it real with your man or woman they still they'll still stay with you they won't leave oh, yeah oh, they, yeah. They, 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 they'll they try to figure out okay you you'll be surprised at how many will if you be I'm honest not, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not either <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I, ain't I was I knew he I was in a 14 year relationship you know I never really called him but I knew somewhere in my heart or in my mind my gut that don't lie. And I didn't know I was psychic then. My gut, which doesn't lie, told me he was. I didn't leave. I mean, I stayed for the wrong reasons, you know, because he was a great dad. But, you know, I put my, my children's happiness over mine, which is important. But eh, I didn't leave. That, so that, don't, that don't mean that was wrong. That don't, that don't mean that was wrong. Because you love your kids. Once again, it's unconditional love. You love your kids. Yeah, you but then I realized that when I chose myself, First and made myself happy. I created an environment to where we can still both parent to co-parent the children happily and not be together. So I could be happy over here, and he could be happy over here. But we still come here for the children. We still function very much like a family, but there is no type of relationship or sexual connection between us at all. But we still co-parent our children, which is the most important thing to us. So that's doable. But, you know, before it, when I didn't know how that would work or I thought maybe he would abandon the children, I stayed. And I think the kids, as kids, I think, like, once they get older, they know, like, okay, mom and dad, I know they wasn't really happy with each other, but they stayed together for us. You know what I'm saying? And and the kids see that, and they respect that a lot more, you know, because you know the what? reason... I my kids were very honest with me. They knew I was unhappy. And especially, I, have, I mean, some of my kids are a little bit older. You know, even though they, they love him too because my older children don't belong to him, but he helped raise them, they still were happy that I made a decision to make me happy. Well, the reason I was in that 14-year relationship that long is because of my kids. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that relationship wouldn't have lasted that long if it, if it wasn't for them. You know what I'm saying? I would have been left her or we would have been split apart and I feel like she probably would have been left me if it wasn't for the kids you know it go both ways but um back to the day I don't have any regrets about that um because um it's it's a beautiful feeling when you wake up to your kids man especially like for men who don't who don't have that like, because a lot of men are great fathers. They want to be a great father. It's the mother that, that keeps them from expressing their greatness towards their children. You know what I'm saying? In most cases, it's the mother that that keeps them from being great with their kids. But most men I talk to and most men I say they want to be great fathers. And they want to wake up to their kids every day. There are cases where men don't take their responsibilities and they do not see their children and they do not call their children. I, I I know that exists. I know that exists, but I'm saying like from my experiences, because my experiences shape my truth. You know, if you listen to the media and you listen to society, they say all oh, black men don't take care of their babies. That's not true. I'm, I'm not, based on no, no, no. I'm not saying that. Yeah, no. yeah. I, I know you're not. I know you're not. I know you're not. I'm just saying based off my experiences, all the guys I know in my life are great fathers, and I know guys who. Who are ste a step daddies to kids that's not even their biological kids and their great father to them kids. You know what I'm saying? So I think naturally a lot of men want to wake up to their kids. A, a lot more than none want to wake up to their kids. And that's why I was in that relationship for 14 years. Like I, I want to wake up to my kids. That was the most beautiful thing. You know? And um it, it lasted 14 years. It should have lasted like three, but it is what it is, you know. And maybe if it lasts, if it didn't last 
14 years, we wouldn't have four kids together. I'd probably just have one with her. But I love all my four kids. You feel me? Like, so. Oh, yeah. So, Mr. Dark Matter, same thing for you. How much does having a kid with the person play in you staying or leaving? Oh, man, listen. It has 100% reason why I'm staying. <laughs> 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 in reality, in reality, the back of my head, I always never wanted a crazy baby mama. Not saying my baby mama crazy, and I always was scared to have kids because of what I'm going through and what I see others go through with having kids with somebody they love. It didn't seem like sometimes having kids changed the whole love of all that. I don't know. Just I don't know, man. And, but yeah, I probably wouldn't be in a relationship with my support, my son. I want to be in my son's life every day. I want to wake up to him every day. I want I want to I want to tell him what I, I want him to know how I feel about life, so he can base his life off how I feel, not based off what society says, what his mother says, what I say, because he needs to know how a man thinks. So that's that's it. And this is and, and this is the same nigga, right? Mr. Dark Matter, the same nigga used to tell me, man, you need to leave your baby mama. And now that he got a child, he can relate to what I was going through. So you knew, nigga. He he admitted that. He admitted that. I give him that. He, he took self-accountability on that. But, like, when you got a baby by a woman and you love your child, like, you'll put up with a lot of BS. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Jazz, you talked about that. You just talked about that. You was in a relationship with a man 14 years, and it probably wouldn't even last that long if y'all didn't have kids. You know, yeah, we both that we both we me and we agree every day. Like the last seven years, it should have ended seven years in. We spent the last right, seven right. years together because we were together for a while before we had our first child. We were together for years before we had our first child, and then came the second one. So we stayed together for that. But when we did decide to split up, we agreed to to, to be friends. And I don't put any limits on the children because they're his too. So he could come get them when he want. He can leave when he want. He can bring them back when he feel like it. He can do what he want, you know, because they're his and children. That's, and that's why y'all are a good partnership. Everybody ain't blessed with that. Facts. That's facts. And I respect you for that, Jazz, because you, you're, you're a great mom just because you allow that man to still be a father in your kid's life. You're not a bitter oh, baby mom. She's a great woman. She's a great, she's a great, she's a great well, woman. That's not because a great I've been on... Woman. I've been on both sides of the fence. Mom, the same thing. I have, I, have, I, have, I have older children who are not necessarily supported by their fathers. So I understand the importance that it is to have a supportive father around. And I understand the importance to have a male in your life as well as a female. I believe that you need both parents equally. Facts. I'm not going just from learning from my own personal experience because I've experienced taking care of children by myself and trying to be the man and the woman on my own to being able to co-parent. And for me, when I remove my emotion and remove my anger and just allowing him to parent them has made my life much easier. Man, woman, child, the, 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 the Trinity, you need that. You need I, agree. That. I think that the, um, the family unit is, is, is very essential to, to healthy grow and it's essential to healthy relationships. You know, we watch our, we, we grow up and we watch our parents, the type of relationships that our parents have. And sometimes they can set the tone to what type of relationships that we have. Right. And, and, and shout out to my I mom and dad. Go ahead, Kay. I, it's sensational, sensational that we, that, uh, oh man, that, uh, that we gotta, uh, oh man, I forgot. Why is this way? Think about too much. It'll come back to me. Go ahead. <laughs> See, I just had that oh, moment. <laughs> hey, this, this, this Naga, you driving Miss Daisy, bro. You've you been driving the whole show, bro. <laughs> I, actually, I, actually haven't been driving, I actually haven't been driving the whole show. It looked like you have, though. It looked like you have. I ain't gonna hold y'all. The car be my sanctuary. When I be stressed about something or something be on my mind, oh, I'm in the oh, car. That's me. That's me too. I'm in the car. Hey, 
like y'all must y'all must got a nice ride. Y'all ain't y'all don't drive a, a hoopty oh, or a oh, bucket. Oh, you know we gotta pit my ride, nigga. You know that exactly. Yeah. That hey hey, that's, y'all got a nice ride, nigga. Hey, listen, if you if you was driving a hoopty, you would think like that. That's fact. <laughs> Hey, I'll probably still be in that hoop. Facts. I, I hear you. Be. And you ain't going to be in that hoop thing with no AC with this 80, 89 degrees outside. Oh, <laughs> oh, I ain't for this. I'm jealous. I don't fucking know. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's what I'm doing. You know how mad I am or how aggravated I am. I'll be in that car burning up. I'm a Sag. I'd rather be in the car burning up than to be in the house, you know, left oh, yeah, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sags is a little off. They, they do off shit like that. I'm not sitting in a hot-ass car bad. I'm not doing Ooh. that. <laughs> Man, I'll be... I'll be walking. I'd rather walk somewhere that heat to sit in that car. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll, That's what I do. I'll, be, walk I'll go to the park or something and take a walk. So if you ever see me taking up and down the street, I'm not, I'm I'm trying to calm down. You know, very few people that can get up under my skin, but my children be one of them. I'm pacing somewhere, a kid that made me mad. You know, because well, we teenage. all know we all know nature is therapeutic. You feel me? Sometimes you got to get out of nature. You know what I'm saying to to get that medicine. That's that natural medicine. We don't go to pharmacies. You feel me? Like we go out of nature, man. Get that vitamin D from the sun, and just feel that air, like. Get some of uh, some uh, some of Mother Nature's remedies, you know. That's like, love. Sit with oh, nature. Yeah. We don't do it enough. Sit, sit with nature. Sit in some trees. Go sit by some water. Especially right. if you got like a natural body of water, like a natural lake or river or ocean, which is even better. You know, go sit by some water. Go sit in some trees. Shit, hug a tree. You know, show nature some love. Just move down south. It'll be easy for you. And take and take your shoes off too, and, and let your feet touch the soil oh. and the grass. Oh, yeah. It's called earthing. <laughs> Most definitely. For real. So, I think we ought to get ready to wrap it up. We're um we passed oh, our. Oh, uh, Sam, so bad time. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, I go to bed early and what. I'm a nurse. I have no duty. Don't you gotta go to work, Mr. Dark Matter? No, I'm off tomorrow, Playboy. I'm, I'm watching the Mayweather knock somebody out tonight. Man, I'm gonna have to miss it. I'm gonna have to catch the playback. I, my, my sleep. Hey, hey, what's on the fight? What's on the fight? You know they be on about 10, 11, stuff like that. Right. The main event probably won't hit until yeah, 10. Hey, well, text me who won, because I ain't. Oh, I, I, ain't I, I think I, I think Chad Ochocinco is supposed to be fighting somebody too. Oh man, t- this yeah just. No, don't need to. Yeah, text me who won, man. Just text me who won, bro. Obviously. Hey, I, I'm trying to debate if, or if I'm going to be sleeping or not. I'm trying to I already you know. You can still be in that car driving, boy. Look at you. <laughs> hell, 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 hell no, hey. Hell no, hey. Hey, hey, he going like. You trying to go somewhere to watch it? Yeah, Columbus. I'm about to figure if I'm about to go to Columbus. Oh, we, uh, you had that. Well, that's only about an hour from you, Columbus. What, about an hour, hour and a half from you? Hour? Oh, 45, 50 minutes. 45, 50 minutes? Yeah. Okay, that ain't bad. And he look like he's going 10 miles per hour in that car, man. Put some, <laughs> hey, man, put some foot on that gas, boy. You over there. <laughs> hey, look. 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 Uh, it's all good, man. I'm at the light, man. You traveling, man? Hey, hey, yeah. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this show, though. We we did our thing. Uh, I didn't even realize the time was. I didn't even realize it was eight twenty after eight. Like, man, time fly when you having fun. Like, oh, 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 when oh, you having fun, glasses, time doesn't God. exist, huh? I don't enjoy those glasses you got on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in. Um, next week, Tish should be back. Um, she had to go to a funeral. So oh, yeah, shout out to Tish. Yeah. Shout out to the guys. Peace and blessings to her. Bless the family. Bless the family. So we shall be back um, next Sunday. Okay. I won't be here. I won't be here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I'm, you gonna I'm, be somewhere in the sun. Puerto, Puerto Rico. I'm in Puerto Rico. You feel me? So I'll be. Well, send us to the landscape. I love mm-hmm. landscape. You gonna take your shoes off in Puerto Rico? You better. Hey. Hey, whip so clean, nigga. Take your shoes off. You feel me? You better. Oh yeah. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right, guys. You so clean, up. nigga. Take your shoes off. Yeah, yeah. You gonna have my shoes off, bro? No, that's right. To walk outside so butt naked. Let, let hey, let that <laughs> let that sun hit everywhere. <laughs> no, my face. I'm going to bed. We going out with a commercial. Holla at everybody wow. next Sunday. Peace. Peace, King and Queen. Y'all be safe. Peace. Peace to everybody.